pranams at the lotus feet of our most beloved Bhagavan, dear brothers and sisters. I feel very, very painful and heavy to speak at this moment in the physical absence of our most beloved Bhagavan. Having been used to speak for 22 years, right in his institute, and even earlier, right from 78, I have been privileged to speak and address devotees, Pune Chandra Auditorium, Kulvanthal, Bangalore, Trai Bhandavan sessions, to stand before you without him. It's very, very painful. He was so kind that he gave me liberties to talk to him and put questions, quite embarrassing, questions that would put me to religious risks, if not spiritual danger, threatening occasions, but yet, he was so generous and so compassionate and specially kind towards me and could tolerate my talk also at times. I say he could tolerate because when everyone felt that certain of the questions that I put are beyond the limits, yet he could smile and answer those questions. I miss him very much personally. There is nothing that has drawn me to Bhagavan other than, other than his personal invitation to go over to Vrindavan as the principal of this campus. I was the state president of such an organization, Andhra Pradesh, for over five years. I think that success brought me here as a principal of this campus. Though it was initial shock to me, though it took quite for some time to adjust to this new ambience, as against my past ambience and the company and my habits, yet he could help me to continue for six long years. At the beginning, Two years or three years I was alone as my children were still studying there at my native place, Guntur. There in the other bungalow I used to live alone with no bridge here, no flats, nothing, excepting falling flat in front of Bhagawan. Nothing else, excepting one or two stray mad dogs on the street, not even street lights. That was the background. And I come from a joint family and to live all alone in that bungalow. And the boys, after completing their classes and some games, immediately running to the hostel and I am to stay there alone. I felt every day, believe me, what God is this the punishment you give me for being successful as the president of such an organization? Had I dreamt it, I would have been a total failure and I wouldn't have been disturbed. I would have continued where I was. Secondly, I am used to hot stuff, the hot, hot pickles. And Karnataka, the pious people, sattvic people, they eat soft food. I am from Rajasik temperament. Hot chilies find their comfortable place in the billy as if it is air-conditioned climate. Nothing whatsoever, any hot stuff will never disturb me at any point of time. Guntur has only one season, summer, greater summer, greater summer, that's all. No other season. And this Bangalore for the first time made me feel what cold climate how it could be. And then in those days, as I tell you, 
as I was alone, when lorries used to pass by, the, ha- the lorry headlights would naturally, lorry headlights, focus on the windows. And there on the wall, we find some pictures on the wall. And there were those days, I saw pictures like Bissal Bad. And with all the pictures they stayed alone, I was very much, very much frightened, wanted to run away also. Because better to survive, that's more important. And the lizards, the lizards of Bangalore, I don't know whether they changed their habits now, but in those days, they used to make a peculiar sound. Besides the pictures on the wall and lizards of the sound, having to stay all alone there, aha, what a lovely honeymoon period it is. May, may God forbid no one should have it. No one should have it. I wanted to get away from this place at the earliest of the opportunities. Every day I decide, but I could not. Some of days passed by, and being a person hailing from a place where my in-laws also stayed, I never had to go to any hotel for any lunch or dinner. So I do not know ABC of cooking. I do not know. And I had to go to the canteen there when Sri Madhavan and Subramanyam were there in those days. And I used to get some food, which is Brahma Padartha. Very difficult to identify whether it is a soup or a curry or a dal, what it is. Ekameva Dvitiyam Brahma, the one without the second. And that I had to eat. And with no one at home, hailing from a joint family, you can imagine what a tough period it is. Some are watching my position for two long years, managing all alone. Though my wife used to come every month, stay for a couple of days and go back, traveling for 19 hours each time. She's, she thought that better I learned some cooking in the evening of my life. Well, what to do? On the reverse side of the calendar, blank surface, she gave some instructions how to cook, how to place the cooker, when to heat it, what to do, prepare the rice, all that. Okay, let me try. And she left. And that is the day when Bhagwan used to leave Bangalore back to Puttaparthi. And Bangalore has got a unique uh, practice that on the day when Swami leaves at that spot, staff members could go inside Tarai Brindavan while Harati is given to Swami. So my first experiment of cooking on that day, and Swami used to leave at 9.30. I started at 9 o'clock and took hold of the calendar, reverse side, scrupulously followed by step by step as qualitative analysis in the chemistry laboratory, one step after another. Well, right. And there she says that you'll get three whistles after which you should put off. And she said that it will be ready within 15 minutes. Half an hour, 40 minutes, no three whistles. I want to take it out and break it immediately. Because it's time up, I should go to Swami. Then immediately I put, switched it off and ran to Trai Brindavan to join other faculty to give heart to Swami. And Bhagwan immediately said, in the midst of everybody, to my embarrassment, how is the cooking? <laughs> Well, what am I to say? Swami, I got very much annoyed with this cooking. Somehow that lid did not come out. What am I to do? Three whistles, what am I to do? Then he said, there is no water in the cooking. How do you expect the lid? (laughs) That is my first first and the last experiment in this beautiful art of cooking. And then he said, I know you cannot manage any longer, I know, enough. And then he asked one gentleman there to bring two pickle pickle bottles from his room. And they are brought down and he said, make you these two pickle bottles, take to the canteen, I know they are enough for you. That's how I 
that also a memory which I can never forget. I would also share with you another instance. Having been in Bangalore, because of cold climate, I got used to have the hot water bath. And that too with the help of a heater. It was at that time, I had to go to Puttaparthi for some academic council meeting, official job. I went along with the heater there, because I used to hot water bath. Being the principal of the campus, first row, first seat is guaranteed. So I wanted to go at my own leisure. Well, I put it in, and the heater there, 15 minutes to go. And I was about to take bath. Water is not hot enough. Why? Because power went off. No power supply. What am I to do? Then what I did was, I had only khandasnan or partial bath. Only up to this extent, that's all. Khandasnan, partial bath. And had new suit with the spray totally applied <laughs> up and down. And I went and sat there along with the rest of the members of the faculty. Our gentle Lord, holding his red robe with one hand, waving his, his hand into the empty air on the other, with a loving, beautiful smile, attractive smile, walking down closer and closer and stood in front of me. Then I knew well there was some entertainment at my cost. <laughs> and then what he did was, he lifted both of his hands and looking up he said, some people come for darshan without bath. <laughs> and all boys and teachers, they're wondering to, to whom it is meant. Before it takes further, before they make a clue out of it, I was praying to Swami, please for, proceed forward. <laughs> I had your darshan next. So many people are waiting. Please. And then he looked at me. I mean you. <laughs> then I could understand. Swami, before I said anything, Bhagwan said, Puttaparthi is a very hot place. I mean, hot place. Why do you need hot water? You can have cold water, but what is it? He said, Swami, yes, I am. <laughs> Swami left and then I know that 30 foreigners are called for an interview that morning. And we have our own calculations. When foreigners are given an interview, so much time he usually takes. When students are called, so much time. When their parents are called, we have got our own wrong calculations. So I had my own calculation and then immediately went to my room. Then I could have power supply and got two buckets of hot water and could have bath with vengeance, <laughs> exhausting half of the soap. And then I changed my dress, applied spray once again and sat there. It is bhajan time. Interviews are over. It is high time for Swami to go to bhajan hall. It is high time. But instead he walked towards me and immediately said, Normal bath is enough, sir, not extraordinary bath. <laughs> not extraordinary bath. Well, I cannot forget that, that experience. And it's in Vrindavan, I stated, I experienced what closeness, what nearness actually meant. That we cannot bluff and that we cannot lie or we cannot be wrong in giving statistics to Swami. You know, there in Vrindavan, there is our college auditorium. By the side of the college auditorium, the other side, facing the guest house, that summer course, Swami wanted a huge shed to be raised, specially raised, to accommodate guests who would be attending summer course that year. And uh, Mr. Srinivasan, then the vice chairman of the World Council, he was asked to do the job. He brought about 33 tin sheets like that and they are to be raised and labor also brought from Madras for the purpose. And they are doing their job and just one sheet is remaining. All the 32 are successfully placed at their respective places. Only one sheet, that's all. Those workers said, yes sir, we can do it, no problem. And it's bhajan time, I came straight to Trayi Bhagavan asked, 
is the work over? I said, Swami, it is over. Then let's go, he said. Yagni should sit in his car. We drove straight to that auditorium. That sheet is yet to be kept there. It is there on the ground. He said, why did you say it is over? Swami, the fellow said they will manage. That you should have said. You said it is over, but it's not so. Then I said, Swami, when you know, why do you ask me? <laughs> then Baba said, I know. But to make you know, I know, I brought you here. <laughs> that is also an instance which I cannot forget, which I cannot forget. And then there in the auditorium, that after the summer course was resumed after 10 year long gap, first time. And the, all the auditorium chairs are not used for 10 long years. And Swami instructed me clearly, see that every screw is tight there. Because if students or guests sit, they will fall. See that everything is done. Why not Swami? And then, we just made all the students to go there, check the seats and they are perfect, tight, quite tight. Everyone told me, sir, tight, tight, very good. I am upright. And Swami came at 10.30 in the morning. He said, Anikumar, all the rows, all right. Perfect, Swami. <laughs> Did you check out? Yes, double. Uh-huh. Come here. Go to the 15th row. Check that 10th chair, he said. I went on counting and then said, no, no, that one is Swami said. And there, there I could collect the seat because it was not properly, it was not tightly fixed. Then Swami said, you see, you have taken care, enough of care and all that. Then, then I said, Swami, I have one thing to say, what? Everything is perfect. In order to embarrass me, you made that seat only light, or else it's white. It was also perfect. You made it, Are, what a knack, right? No, no, you should be perfect, you may go. Such things where I could also speak out. And then when curtains are stitched and some of the old curtains replaced, there in the auditorium, one, two curtains there, all windows have window curtains. It so happened, one window curtain is lost. When Swami comes, oh, what is it I can show? So, what I did was, I removed its counterpart here also. So that both would be uniformly blank. <laughs> and then he came neatly and said, What about that? Swami, they have I given to Dobi, Swami. It has stains and aha, uh -huh, Dobi. One is lost. And you have removed the other one. Or have you given the other one also Dobi as it your grandfather's property? No, no, Swami, I have not given the other one. I am sorry. He said, I know, Ram. Where am I? I am in you. I am in the hall. In the curtain also. Understand that I know everything. You cannot bluff. That also, I very well remember. And then I think it was Mr. Gopal, I believe. Uh, he said that the chair of Swami needs some repair. What, Gopal? Chalarams, right? Ah. He said, Mr. Anil Kumar, since these chairs are not used, one chair needs replacement. I'll take it, he said. Why not get it? He took the chair. And then I was having my lunch there. Immediately Swami sent a word, ask him to come. I went there. And Swami said, where is my chair? Where is my, what chair Swami? My chair, where is it? Swami, your, your chairs are here. In Mandir there are a number of chairs. And the college number, no, 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 that chair I want. Why, so what is that chair? No, no, that chair you have sent to the city. Without permission, you have sent that chair for the, why? You will mortgage my college also. I know that. What I want? Swami, why do you need, no, I want a picture now. Some photographers are there. I want to sit on that chair only. I want, Swami, and then, <laughs> I was very nervous actually, sweating heavily. And Swami went, and that evening we had a meeting there here, the Kalyan Mandapa. Swami walking slowly, he looked at Dr. Padmanabhan and said, Look here, doctor, Yemonapa Gunturni Jovani Dechinanu, 
ప్రిన్సిపాల్ కింద నా కాలేజీ మార్కెట్లో అమ్మేస్తున్నాడు అండ్ ఈ జస్ట్ పుట్టింగ్ ఆల్ మై కాలేజ్ ఆన్ సేల్ అండ్ దెన్ ఈ లుక్ ఎట్ గంగాధర్ చెట్టి ఆల్సో ఐ ఐ డోంట్ థింక్ దట్ ఈ రిమెంబర్ దట్ ఈ టోల్ మీ మా కాలేజ్ సామాన్లన్నీ బస్ స్టాండ్లో అమ్ముతున్నాడయ్యా ఈయన నా చైర్ లేదు నా చైర్ అబ్బా అబ్బా దట్ వాస్ ద సో మెనీ చైర్స్ ఇస్ ఏ యూ వాంటెడ్ దట్ చైర్ వెల్ దట్ వాస్ ద లెసన్ ఫర్ మీ టు లర్న్ దట్ నథింగ్ కుడ్ బి డన్ వితౌట్ హిస్ ప్రయర్ పర్మిషన్ దట్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ షుడ్ బి ఇంటిమేటెడ్ టు హిమ్ అండ్ ద ద ఫస్ట్ ఇయర్ హ్యాడ్ అనదర్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ వాట్ హ్యాపెన్ వాస్ ఇట్ వాస్ ఇన్ ద ప్రాక్టీస్ ఇన్ బృందావన్ where some army personnel from the city come here and render service army people there in the college campus they attend to all the garden work there i didn't know that so i went there i saw these people working i was happy that somebody working what is there a problem <laughs> at 10 o'clock swami comes there and he calls me who are those people i don't know swami you don't know do you know who are you Swami, who are you? Swami, Anil Kumar, no, no. By position, what are you? Then I said, Swami, you, you brought me as a principal. What do I know? Uh, so, anybody can enter into the campus without the knowledge of the principal. Buffaloes, donkeys, anybody can enter. What for have I brought you here? You know? Oh, I see. <laughs> then Swami shouted and then left the place. then immediately i went there made an inquiry of the people there who are you where do you come from there are army people from from tamil nadu one from punjab one andhra like that i could have some statistics headed by one major by name sood who settled in patiala now by name sood i made all inquiry about these people and then got ready went to brindavan at the three brindavan so i said let's go and see then we went there and then because i got some information i started telling swami he is from tamil nadu he is from punjab and he is from ah ah atla na as if he never he never ah manchi atla na manchi bangar madhya then i immediately took him to that suit swami is major suit and he brings army every week to extend some sir ah atla na good manchi bangar then he picked up the finger of that major sood ah this ring i gave you 10 years ago 10 years ago and then he took that ring took out it and blew and it got converted into diamond ring and fixed his finger and then said hmm your daughter must be doing medicine right we were talking to sood yes sir oh when i came to north indian tour at that time she was just a child she must be doing medicine now ah uh, your boy bank manager i know i was wondering then slowly i said swami what is all this you shouted why they are here and you said that i do not know this but you know that why all this? no no you are supposed to know i know everything not only this i know everything you should know at least this therefore i am telling you oh swami then i said swami shall ask them to quit since they came here without my permission shall i ask them to quit then bhagwan said since you have not invited them you cannot ask them to quit <laughs> see that ha huh? always kept him in a fix it is again here in vrindavan i was informed that swami is proceeding to tumlur tumkor this one is built by ramesh bethi and ramesh bethi has another granite factory there in tumkor and swami went there to inaugurate it i followed him and there a wonderful wonderful shamiyan is specially made for the purpose anup jalata rendered music excellent fully packed with union ministers arjun singh also was there at that time and uh, some international dignitaries who happen to be the members of the board advisory members of the tumkur factory and swami sat there and at the end of the meeting swami slowly walked out of the shamiana i followed him 
Then Swami went to a big hall where the first board of uh, directors meeting was held. One from Japan, one from France, and one from Germany, international board of directors. And wonderful table, you see, and the chairs, all uniform. And should I go or not? If I go, he may ask you, who asked you to come? If I do not go, why have I brought you here? What purpose are you here? So to be or not to be, that is the question. So ultimately what I decided was to stand at the gate, at the entrance, show my half body like that. <laughs> if he looks at me seriously, I can run away immediately. <laughs> if he calls me, I can run close to him. In either way, a respectable, safe distance from him. <laughs> so, <laughs> I saw Swami talking to everybody. And then he looked at me there. Get. Come on, come on. Then I went. Yeah, me What is that you are staring at? What is that you are looking at? Swami, you are talking to German in German language, French language, Japanese. You speak so many languages. Huh? I don't know. Yes, I talk so what? Then why not, Swami? Then why do you need a translator? When you speak all languages, why do you need a translator? Then he said, how are you bothered about it? No, Swami, I want to know. I see you speaking so many international languages here. Then why do you need a translator? Why should I do it? And the Ramagavan said, I know all languages. The avatar has taken its birth at a particular land. And the, and the language of the land must be blessed. The people of the area must be blessed. The village where I was born should be also blessed. It should be global. It is for that reason I speak in Telugu, not that I do not know English. Sir, he said. Okay, Swami, you know English. All right. Then why have you brought me here? Then he said, I know all the languages. To make you know, I know English also. So I brought you here, you said. <laughs> there are many more experiences of this kind, my friend. But I know this is a, combination, a heterogeneous congregation. We have some youngsters from the Sri Satsai Institute of Higher Learning, Vrindavan campus, the first year students, who had no exposure to Bhagwan, and to let them know I narrated these experiences, not that I am not aware of the topic given and the responsibility that lies ahead. So the boys must have been convinced by now that Bhagwan knows all languages, point one. That Bhagwan is everywhere, two, three, that you cannot hide anything from him. These are the three fundamental principles of spirituality. If you know that, that is the end all, be all. And I also know a section of the audience here who have moved very closely and intimately with Bhagwan, who spent decades and decades in the company of Bhagwan. They feel frustrated, they feel dejected, they feel isolated, they feel lonely, they find life meaningless. Particularly those in Prashantinilayam who see Swami day in and day out and those that stay in sheds 31, 32, 33 where you have septuagenarians, octogenarians with arthritis spondylitis, pneumonitis, who cannot walk the distance, still manage to walk for bhajans, who spend every day eating on the leftover rice served to them, sweeping the campus. How do they feel now? What is the reaction now? Their only hope, their only refuge is Bhagwan himself. 
Thus old people. Not only that, we find many people in and outside Prasantalayam. There are singles staying. A widow, a widower, left with none, aged 80, about 70. They don't go to their children. They left all their properties. They told their children, here we settle, we don't want anybody, we want only Bhagwan. we settle here. They purchased on their own some flats outside. What will happen to Swami? I'm not very much concerned about youngsters who can run away anytime. They have been doing it. We are a witness to many such flights. But how about these old people who have decided to stay here? Who are away from their children? How do they carry on their life? And I also find many, many young people working in the hospital, at the institute, there in the trust. The boys were gold medalists who secured ranks at the postgraduate level while their classmates draw at least one lakh, two lakh salary, rupees salary. These boys are working there just for five thousand, six thousand, nothing. What made them stay there? Gold medalists, top people. Well, they are all here. They are all here. That some of my, some of them are my students also. Say, for example, Ashwin was my student, a very brilliant student, very brilliant, extraordinary student. Every day I feel he would have made a wonderful career as a professor at the university, not as a technician there. Take for example Sarvind, and take also that uh, biology man, Praveen. Top boys, you are all top boys. Yes, what made them work there? Chandrasekhar, yes, they are excellent academicians, all their counterparts who are not even half to them in talent or in knowledge, they are far, far better, higher, superior in their pay, pay, pay packets. But what made them stay there? What will happen to Swami? Who will inspire them, Bhagavan? And we also know many Staff members who have been here for the last three decades. We have none else who spent summer vacation also there. Take Sir Dr. Ravi Kumar, Mr. Sanjay Sahani. They have been here since long. They have no vacation. Vacation, Puttaparthi. Rest of the profession, vacation, profession, Puttaparthi and Burundavan. Like a pendulum they move like that. No one else. I don't think that they know their hometowns. I don't think they will be recognized when they go back either. They have been spending all their lifetime here. What will happen to them? Who will inspire them, Bhagavan? That's what I feel like that. I feel so sorry, so bad, so frustrated. But yet, but yet, Bhagavan, you are living reality. Swami, your existential reality, your ever living, ever living, never failing, ever loving God amidst us, who will continue to be with us forever and ever and ever. There is no doubt about it. After all, the physical body that he left, when Bhagavan says, You are not the body, who am I to say, Swami, you are the body? When you are not the body, how can he be the body? So, you and I, Bhagavan, are not limited to the framework of the body. But we operate at the level of the body, while he is beyond the body, at all times, any time, every time, each day. So, Swami has not left us. I can also, there is some question also that bothers me. How Bhagavan, how have we developed all these complications? How is it that there is some heart problem for which you needed a pacemaker? Then your lung problem also? You have to be on ventilator? You have problem with the kidneys that you need a dialysis? And liver also developed some problem? That led to jaundice? 
How is that you have all these problems? Many doctors say that it is not possible to have all the problems at a time. Even they too have some principle, some sequence. They don't bother you all at a time. How is that Bhagavan had all these problems at a time? Well, as I think deeply enough within myself, these problems must have been there earlier. But he didn't care for those problems because a demonstration that is beyond the body and not the body, that he is beyond the body. He is not at all bothered with health problems. Some of those who are here, my friends, must be knowing the day when he runs temperature, 102 or 103, he speaks half an hour more than usual. You know that. He strains himself one hour more than usual. So these are instances to tell you that these problems must have been there, but he's not bothered. He didn't care for them. In other words, he strained every nerve, every cell, every drop of his blood for the service of the humanity, unmindful of his health and the body. The continued sequence, the continued sickness, repeated, repeated problems certainly indicate how much of a suffering that he could take to serve the humanity. The history recorded only another instance. History recorded only one incarnation who sacrificed his life, who sacrificed his blood, bearing all the pain and suffering. It was Jesus Christ then. Today it is Bhagavan Sri Satchai Baba. No one else in between. No one else in between. Well, he never bothered about these things. After all, on the other hand, when he had done some, I remember, very well remember, in some place like Kodaikanal, when we noticed that he is suffering from temperature, I go softly to him, Swami, let us have bhajans today. I cannot say, let us not your lecture, have your lecture. Swami, please let us cancel your talk. I cannot say that, because there is a huge lake in front of the building. I may find my place there. I don't want to take the, that risk. So I said, Swami, let us have bhajans. He said, then you speak now. Swami, they have not come here for my speech. They have come to listen to you, not to my speech. No, no, you speak, hey, me, tappe, me. nothing wrong. Swami, I want to live for some time more. Please spare me this time. And Swami came and still hand shivering because 103 degrees temperature. Mr. Gopinath of this campus is the witness. He asked Gopinath to bring the temperature and recorded 103. Hands are shivering. And he wanted the glass doors to be closed. And he could not speak. Then he goes to that bhajan hall in Kodai Kanal. Three bhajans, four bhajans. He asked them to stop. Come on. He gave a metallic tone. Dada, dada, dada. Half an hour more. Then he asked me, and then he came up a general fever. He is pitying his own body. Body is suffering from temperature. What is it I can do? Shall I say yes or no? Just expressionless, like colorless, waterless, tasteless gas, as we study in chemistry, I have put on a face with no expression. I cannot say yes. Then we went softly inside, and then he asked Gopinath to bring the thermometer, 103 degrees. And then he asked, boys, boys, you want me to cure myself? All boys said yes. Come on, close your eyes, pray. Five minutes time. He record the temperature, normal 98.4. That is Bhagavan Sri Satchai Baba. The one who could control his temperature within no time. Can't he cure himself? It was in the year 1988. He had some fracture in the pelvic region. Fracture near the pelvic region is highly painful. To say in Bhagavan's words, that's best known to the doctors. And to the patients. Severe excruciating pain. 
it was onam festival swami was brought in a wheelchair he got up and gave talk quite normal so the fracture did bother him temperature did bother him when he went on trip to goa the left part got paralyzed the left part got, got paralyzed the body is taken in stretcher and he sprinkled water on the left side normal he got up and he could speak then bhagavan could go beyond the temperature then is unmindful of the fracture when paralysis is nothing what about these problems they cannot bother him then what is all the drama going on we find many doctors from bombay bangalore delhi overseas at one time 36 doctors later 18 12 they were working tirelessly round the clock round the clock every day they go to close to him do namaskar pray to guide them to guide them what is to be done he is not the patient he is a doctor of doctors bhagwan sri satchai baba and all doctors considered it as a matter of service as a matter of opportunity to go near him near him they prayed and started the treatment and he just allowed them to treat them just allowed them that's all as i know my friends as some of you also stand a witness as we touch his feet the feet are so delicate so tender so soft tabasil silky madawa so soft softer than the petals of a rose swami how could you bear all these needles getting into your body intravenous needles oxygen cylinders dialysis ventilator how could that body bear all these pinches how could you take all this burden and pain now i get an answer within myself he allowed the body to lie down on the bed while he was moving all around the world meeting the devotees blessing the devotees for which he has come on earth i don't think that he remained in the body at that time certainly not because that body cannot bear that pain that body cannot receive needles pinches like that repeatedly impossible but still he could have meaning he left the body and we he went round well some of you may say it is all your imagination how do you say that one time it so happened in prashant lem 12th class examinations were going on he asked one boy what exams in today mathematics swami aha uh-huh. i have done very well are normus ka shada two problems wrong two problems wrong said i am bhagan who saw any there then he asked her how much swami had done well aha good how many marks you expect 70 no no you will get 90 don't worry he was telling the marks of the boys on the day of the examination the scripts have not gone to the examiners they were not dispatched yet then swami declares you all think that i am in my room You all think that I am resting there? No, I look all around. All of you, all my devotees, all my children, all my students. That is my only job, says Bhagwan Sri Satchai Baba. <laughs> Therefore, my friends, Swami cannot leave us. We cannot leave him. This is an eternal bondage. this is an immortal understanding this is a selfless bond of love between our god and ourselves here we never see him alone we never see him eating alone he wants company somebody other to joke regularly constantly what wonderful jokes so he cannot be away from us i am sure that he is listening to this talk right now here in bundavan sai ramesh hall without fail 
I very well remember umpteen number of occasions giving a smile on either side, a hearty laugh when I, whenever I was talking in front of him. Whenever I, because he used to laugh, laugh like that, Bhagavan. Really so. Therefore, my friends, his life is a life of a hero. But our problem is how to carry on the life without that hero being ourselves a zero. I am a zero. How am I to li live in future without that hero? This kind of pangs of pain, this agony, this anguish and distress is because of physical attachment. I see him morning and evening, therefore I feel bad. But those that see him once, they are a little better. Those who are far off, they see him occasionally, they don't cry that much. Why? Because those that are away from us, they are very close to Swami because it is one of connection, heart to heart, love to heart, love, spiritual contact but not physical association. It is not physical nearness, it is spiritual dearness that matters. Therefore, in the path ahead, the first and the foremost thing that we have to cultivate, that we have to develop is this. Bhagavan, you are spiritual, you are not physical. I think you are physical, and limit myself to ritual. Physical and ritual go together. The spiritual relationship is eternal. It is one of continuous, like the flow of the river that knows no end nor a beginning. Our contact with Bhagavan is not of this life because of many more lives of good merit accrued, we could be here at his lotus feet. And this will go on, on and on. Then I should also mention here, couple of years ago, at least eight years back, there in Prashantanayam, in front of Ganesh statue, Swami was standing and he called me. And he said, this is the place where Samadhi is going to be. This is the place where Samadhi is going to be, I said. Swami, by temperament, I am a coward. I am a timid man. I cannot listen to such words. I am frightened. Don't joke like that. Please don't speak like that. Then Swami said, no, that is inevitable to anybody. Inevitable. Body is like a water bubble. Keep quiet. Body is a water bubble. It won't go. Whatever may be, this I don't want, Swami. Whatever may be, bubble, bubble, let, bubble enjoy, that's it. So Swami gave an indication already. And in Kodakanar, at one time, this discussion came, 96 years, that you continue to be in this body for 96 years. Then Swami immediately said, if I decide I can live for longer time, beyond 96, if I want, I can withdraw right now. Then said Swami, what is it you are speaking? This is summer. Boys followed you to Kodaikanal to enjoy, to eat and to have individual photographs and to receive gifts from you. Not to hear these words. Are, shut up. That is inevitable that will come someday or other. And about the 96 years, then people say, why? Why 10 years? Still 10 years more. But what calculation we do not know. For information, I may tell you, when Gopal Rao, Kallur Gopal Rao, was felicitated there at Prashantalayam, when he's actually 98 or 99, Bhagavan said he's 105. Gopal Rao said, Swami, I'm only 99 young. It's not 105. Baba said, yes, as per lunar calendar, you are 105, I know. 
Therefore, when Swami left at the age of 85, let us not think that he has gone back by the promise given. It is 96 as per lunar calendar. All scholars have said it. It is all televised, telecast, broadcast all over the country. Therefore, Swami also jokes now and then. When he tells Kerala people, I will come to Kerala, I will come to Kerala. Then I am also tempted to know, Swami, when, when are you going? Because I too can follow him. Not that I am interested in his visit. I am interested in my following him. For my own professional job to translate his discourses. Swami, when are you going? Who said that? Swami, you told them that you are going to Kerala. I said, but I did not say when. I said I will come, but I did not say when. So 96 years he said, but what? Solar system or lunar system? In between, we are lunatic. Therefore, if we go in the broader sense, he lived for 96 years. That's what many scholars said. Basing on all astrological calculations. And I can also draw your attention to many of the things that have happened. My friends, kindly bear with me. This is an occasion that, should, that we should enthuse each other, encourage each other, console each other, be of support to each other, give up all the ego. Let us forget all the pride and silly, meaningless comparisons and competitions. Let us not have any kind of individual identity. Let us think of those days with Swami constantly. We may be wondering how to think of those days in these days. Simple example, Baba himself said, You are here in Kodaikanal. You see me, the boys are here. When you go back to your native place, when you go back to your native place, Swami is not there physically. Boys are not there physically. This room is not there. But yet, you can imagine within no time. Because psychological imagination, psychological thought is superior to physical countenance. Mere physical watchfulness. This is inferior to the psychological thought. Therefore, Bhagavan, help us to think of you. Help us to pictureize you. Help us to think those happy days of togetherness, the wonderful sweet days of conversation, the excellent gifts of grace that you have given to us in those days, so that we will ever and ever live in him, be with him, doubtless about it. Doubtless about it. Why? Because Swami himself gave one example. Because of 40 years of association, 22 years of working right under his nose. I recall many, many things. When I actually wanted to tell you something, some other things are just flowing like that. I can't help it. Bhagavan himself said at one time, I believe you, but you don't believe me. Why? I believe every one of you, but none of you believe me. Why? Why? Because I am in everyone I know and you do not know that. I am in every one of you, therefore I believe myself. And you do not know that I am in you, therefore you have no faith in me. That is the difference between you and me, says Bhagavan. Therefore, those days we should constantly ruminate and think and feel that we are never away from him. What is path ahead of us? As I already said, let us grow spiritually. Let us forget this physical appearance, the physical frame, the physical body as the main thing is not important any longer. Number two, let us not speak of individual experiences, individual miracles in front of a large audience like this. Why? Because they are absolutely personal. It was to Dr. Amarendra, the first principal of Prashantinalayam campus, Sri Satchasai College of Arts and Science, Dr. Amarendra. 
Swami told him directly, certain of the experience given to you are absolutely personal, not to be publicized or blow your trumpet. So the path, go ahead, forget our personal things. Let us give emph emphasis on the message of Sai. What does he say about different aspects of life? To this huge gathering, in all humility, with 100% guarantee, with a long service and experience in life, having been associated with several spiritual organizations for decades, I can declare emphatically that nobody dealt as many subjects as Bhagavan Sri Sach Sai Baba. He dealt all subjects under the sun. Subject for youth, subject for children, subject for women, history, professionals, yoga, what not. He dealt on, on all subjects. So our immediate business is to make a deep study of Sai literature, particularly the students and the staff of Sri Satya Sai University. Not simply Goswami appeared in a dream. You can say that. I don't deny that. But life is not dreamland anymore. It cannot convince anybody anymore. Let us speak of his message. What does, he, what does Swami say at this hour? Simple example. When I am suffering, when I am worried, what should I do? Baba gives simple thing. When you are worried, don't over worry by thinking of that worry. What should I do, Swami? Get out, go to some bhajan. You will not have worry anymore. You don't need any stress management or mind management other than such a Sai bhajan's best solution for all worries and anxieties. <laughs> Sing Sai bhajan. Take, take it for granted. There will be no worry because worry is shifted to him. He is there. Leave all my burdens at my feet. Go forth from here with bliss and joy through and excitement, says Bhagwan Baba. Therefore, let us unburden by singing his glory. So he tells, he has got an answer to every problem in our life. We have to categorize. They are already classified. Let us talk to students what Swami's message is. Let us talk to professionals what he has to say. Let everyone be the, a missionary, a missionary of such a Sai. Let all of you be missionaries and visionaries in Sai mission. That's what my earnest prayer to all of you. Everybody should be able to say what Swami has to God to say on this subject. Like this, my friends, we have many, many things to share with you. I'll wind up. Never, not to my knowledge, never media covered miracles before after Swami left his physical body all medias started showing the miracles experiences of devotee which itself says that he is he is and that isness is divin divinity we can never say Bhagawan was no we should not use Bhagawan will be Bhagawan is that easiness, that existence, that moment, that reality is the divinity of Bhagawan Sri Satsai Baba. In Puttaparthi, as it is shown on TV, we find the honey flowing, the vibhuti flowing out of an ideal, in Vijay, out of his idol. And we also find in Vijayanagaram, we find the honey coming out of the photograph. And Anantapur, Varangal, these are all the places recorded by channels who went there with a questioning mind, with a challenging mind, and they have televised all these things. Why? Because for all of us, not to doubt. It was Judas Iscariot who denied his God. When Judas said, Oh God, you are my God. And Jesus said, Shut up. You'll deny me thrice. You'll deny me thrice before the cock crows. Let us not be Judas. No, no, Swami. We shall not deny you. Denying you is denying myself. Therefore, this sort of a commitment, this sort of a dedication should continue in our lives. 
till the last breath let us be with sai in ha in sai and be sai in our own lives levels set an example to the entire community to the whole world that here is sai devotee here is a group of sai devotees who have faith unshakable unparalleled that's what they should know that day is very much close to us that day will certainly come let us stand united let us have love let us have mutual appreciation recognition identification based on talent and skills let us go ahead therefore my friends with prayers to bhagwan and thanks to alumni for having invited me to share these thoughts with you last but not least it is in malaysia where 108 water tanks are built by youth of malaysia on their own and it is in japan 600 youth are trained to recite veda for hours and hours and it is japan they started such sai vedic renaissance where veda is translated into japanese language including translation all this work is going on all over the world because of such a sai only bhagwan said when the life of human being goes down the prices of the material objects will go up human value has gone down therefore prices of the material objects have gone up he gives one example there is the heart of the city of bombay square yard is very costly well you can purchase it 10 acres in your village why it is so costly there in bombay and delhi because it is inhabited by countless number of citizens there because of over population the site price has gone up man is more important than the material since you attach importance to the material therefore prices have gone up if you attach importance to the man prices will be under check and we also find today people are highly conscious of the health highly conscious of the health you find people going jogging running everywhere but still keep the same size of course because they eat double after jogging and what solution does he say bhagwan says more than your jogging physical exercise the mental happiness the mental equanimity the mental equipoise is much more important than the physical exercise that you do because we find some people doing jogging if you watch their face you will understand you need not have to meet shakespeare that is a very replica of shakespeare long castroid faces what are doing by jogging you will your blood pressure will go up where is the smile swami will say em ratla gunnaru anta castroid face ye bechi he doesn't want castroid faces he wants us to smile when we cannot smile i may walk for miles but it is useless therefore the mind has to be kept happy how to keep the mind happy again another question he gives solution my friends what is that has drawn me into swami is his message which is unequaled irresistible unbeaten universal that is sai message that has drawn the whole world to his lotus feet but he says how to see that bhagwan do not think of tomorrow do not think of yesterday live in the present live in the moment live in the existence then you will be healthy then how about the eating keep the half stomach empty in the other half fill it with half of water the other food ha huh? so shall i measure swami not necessary if you can get up comfortably as you sit it is enough of exercise bhagwan has something to say in every walk of life in every sphere of human activity interrelationships friendships the ideal relationship that would exist between husband and wife how children should behave towards their parents what patriotism is how to love the country please recall yourself mr ravi kumar has got record of all these instances 1972 what did vajpai say vajpai said bhagwan you need to conduct classes 
on indian culture and spirituality not only for students but also for the members of the parliament that was by said because how dedicated should be how devoted you should be what patriotism is well i don't have to repeat if we just khanda khandantara khatinarjinchina mahaniyulunu ganna matrubhumi the moment we think of poem yell we are fully charged parama bhavana mainatti bharatavani yandu sahanamannadi chakkadanam i can say the whole poem many poems what all he said yuga igantaramulandu khati gannatti bharata bhuma atakitti sai siddhantamulu cheta sana pettudu vanne pettudu meer ikka sunnitamuga well i don't want to exhibit all my scholarship in sai literature within this brief time nor there any need for it i can only tell you if you want to be patriotic with all the national fervor yes follow sai literature then about the mission path ahead it is a bounden responsibility a sacred duty on the part of the alumni because bhagwan said i spend 75% of time for students this is the time to express our gratitude this is an occasion to to show our thankfulness to our god love cannot be one way traffic it should be on both sides but my friends as you do swami's work he will do your work much better than what you have done for yourself i can give thousands of instances of this kind where people got promotions where people got appointments where people won the acclaim reputation because of grace of bhagwan so alumni responsibility yes 75% what do i mean i got the experience in the organization for two decades having served in different capacities the immediate thing is we have to build up confidence among people because our minds are confused our minds are disturbed because of media going on because of the press that mentions so many of the things but yet i don't need the support of any paper paper i don't need the support of any tv channel i am the witness to myself my experience in my life is enough i don't need to be acknowledged by any media you are all here you have number of experiences in your own life in your own way each experience is enough of a witness is enough of testimonial to grow in confidence without relying on the paper the papers may publish that your father is mad are you going to believe it i know that my father is not mad that all the papers may publish but i am not going to believe that my father is mad similarly my friends let us have that that the whole world say anything but i hold on i hold on to thy lotus feet bhagwan should be our pledge today come what may let the press may say let the channels may say thousands of things but the truth we know the truth we know because it is not an easy process the human history has not recorded a single person from a village from a hamlet with 100 population with no approach roads with no electricity with no wells with no proper housing with no school excepting only huts and sheds from that village a boy could take that village to a global village made it a global village a center of hope a center of promise a center of spiritual excellence a spirit a center of fellowship of faiths a center of congregation of worship prashantilayam it is only bhagavan sri satchai baba who do it no one else no one else no one else impossible you don't find any place where people of different religions gather at one place 
and sing in praise of God in unison and in perfect harmony. You don't find youngsters in temples. You find retired people in temples to, th to think of their daughters-in-law and sons-in-law who have not been up to their expectations. It is only Sai centers. I repeat, it is only Sai centers. Maximum youth are involved. That is the credit of Bhagavan Sri Satcha Sai Baba. Therefore, my friends, in the path of head, I request all youngsters to take to service more seriously. Cover villages as many as possible. Extend service depending upon their need, not we have, not what we have. Swami said once he was giving toothpaste, comb and brush. God giving toothpaste and brush? I have put a question mark face. Then Baba said, Paste I give you what you need, not that whatever I have, not whatever I want to, no, what you need. Therefore, understand what villagers need and give them, serve them, so that people we know, hold. Humanity should know. Sai is service. Service is Sai. Sai is sacrifice. Sacrifice is Sai. Nothing beyond that. <laughs> Therefore, it is only our service. It is only our sacrifice that would convince everybody not by talk, not by article, nothing whatsoever. That's why Bhagavan is not given to publicity at any point of time till his last moment. It's not publicity. Therefore, service most important. And to bring the message to the doorsteps of everybody. And three, let us grow in sadhana individually. Individual sadhana is very important to survive and to continue. Individual sadhana, why? Because our mind is not shattered, that we are not confused, that we are not carried away. Manchumata vinaru. Manasu vippi cheppina Chaddamatala ve cheviki soku Itti dhurthulu Nannu yerugurthura Satchamayana maata Sai maata Said Bhagavan long back Whatever that is said All the gossip will get into your ears immediately But you don't listen to good things Such people can they ever know me Can they ever understand me Questions Bhagavan Therefore in order to strengthen That faith in Bhagavan we should grow more and more in the individual sadhana, then collective sadhana, spreading the human values, the relationships, and we should be a best example of a Sai devotee to everybody. I know the time up, but before I conclude, I'll just mention the highlights, the highlights such that they will guide you in future. Bhagavan said, Bhagavan Swami, what is the relationship between you and me? What kind of relationship is there between you and me? This is the answer. They are directly from Swami's message. Bhagavan says, I shall not forsake you, come what may. Even if you leave me, I shall not leave you. My relationship between you and me are permanent, eternal, says Bhagavan Sri Sat Sai Baba. What more guarantee you want? Swami, what relationship, relationship should I have towards you? You said that our relationship is permanent. Okay. But what relationship should I have towards you? Bhagavan said, See me in yourself. See me in yourself because I see myself in you. I see myself in you. You see me in me because we are together once for all. Bhagavan, I am in search of you. It is darshan time, Swami. It is bhajan time, Swami. Where are you? Where are you? Where can I locate you? I am here with a letter. I am here with a flower. Bhagavan, when are you going to walk along the road, Swami? Swami clearly said, I am not here. I am residing in your heart, in your heart. These are the words of Bhagavan. 
So if we say where is Bhagavan means you are asking where is your heart. If you say Swami left it means you already left without your knowledge. So some people ask me when, he, when will he come back. I said he has not gone. Where is the question of coming back? Therefore let us know that he and we are one. And then Swami said Bhagavan how to develop this kind of live contact with you in the physical absence and he said it is only by reciting my name reciting my name mad bhakta yatra gayante tatra tishthami narada by reciting me my name you can establish contact and then swami how long will you struggle how long will you struggle like this how long will you work like this tirelessly you have given your life for us how long would you continue bhagwan said i shall not rest please note i shall not rest until i reform you i shall not leave you until i accomplish what i want to through you thank you may god bless you <laughs>